When I first turbocharged my junkyard big block, everybody told me that if I ran more than five pounds of boost, we would instantly blow up the motor because according to the internet, it is the weakest big block GM has ever produced. Now, it's been together for a year and a half, and at our very last race, we ran a max of 20 pounds of boost, and we did probably eight or 10 different passes, and so far, the truck has basically held together amazingly. It's putting down a ton of power and torque. However, there is one problem that's gotten increasingly worse as we continue to turn up the boost, and it's been evidenced by this huge cloud of smoke that you see every time I let off the throttle. Now, nobody likes to see smoke coming out of their tailpipe. It's not necessarily a good sign. However, the cause, I think, is not a big deal. Now, I have a dyno event coming up this weekend, and I'm really excited to find out how much power and torque the Turbo Big Block is going to make on 20 pounds of boost and E85. I think the number is going to impress everybody. And then after that, we're actually going back to the quarter mile drag strip to find out how fast it is. But before I continue to run this truck with that big cloud of smoke, um, I want to fix the problem, or at least fix what I think is the cause of the problem. So today, for the very first time, we are taking apart our Junkyard 8.1. So one thing I get asked probably more than anything else about this particular engine is have I ever, ever had it open? Have I ever been inside? You know, they'll ask, like, have you opened up the ring gaps? Well, like, literally this engine is as bone stock as it can be, like stock ring gap, you know, stock valve spring, stock everything. This will literally be the first time since I bought this engine over two years ago that I've ever opened it up. So I'm really excited to see what it looks like. Now, I bought this engine when I was living in Tennessee, and it came from a junkyard, actually New Hampshire. These 8.1s, they're not like as readily available as the LSs are. Um, so because it came from New Hampshire, it's pretty rusty and dirty, but if I remember right, the listing said this engine only had like, I think it was like 140,000 miles on it. Um, and like I said before, it's running pretty darn good, especially considering what we've done to it. One more question I get asked is about the turbo. People ask, well, if I did it all over again, would I go smaller or bigger? Um, for a stock build like this, I'd probably go with like a, I don't know, like an S475, the S480. Um, it makes good power up top, but it does take a little bit of time to spool up. tell you guys it does feel good to kind of get back to turning wrenches because I know we've had a lot of videos lately where we've just been doing other events and just other not fun stuff but 
Um, we're kind of in between projects at the moment. Um, there's a lot going on, which I'm excited to show you. Uh, but yeah, for now, it just feels good to get back to working on something and turning wrenches, getting my hands dirty. Now, if you can think of a worse idea than the one that I'm about to show you, I want you to let me know about it down in the comments because in terms of stupid engineering ideas, like this one takes the cake. I don't know who came up with this from GM, but uh, definitely not impressed. Now, we have the intake manifold off and we're talking about the PCV system. And unlike a normal engine that has, you know, things like a check valve or a baffle to help control oil, on an 8.1, the PCV system consists entirely of this little hole right here that's been drilled between the crankcase and the intake plenum. So whenever the engine's running and there's vacuum inside here, it's just sucking any amount of oil vapor that's collecting right here straight into the intake plenum. And if you look down into one of the runners, there's just a massive puddle of oil. So that PCV hole is a huge reason why 8.1s have an oil consumption problem. Now for me, things only get worse because we're pumping 20 pounds of boost directly down the throat of this intake, and guess where it's gonna go? It's escaping through that hole right there and filling up the crankcase with all kinds of pressurized air that should not be in the crankcase. Now, luckily there is a small path for it to escape. You can follow the zip tie here um, down in the face of the throttle body or, or whatever you wanna call that, that intake flange. I've modified the throttle body to block off the second place where boost pressure will enter the crankcase. The air will actually be allowed to escape out of this hose right here. So it's not necessarily pressurizing the crankcase, but under boost, you get a huge volume of air coming out of that hole, you know, disturbing all the oil vapor that's floating around. And then whenever we let off the throttle at the end of a run, the crankcase or the engine goes into a deep vacuum and it sucks all that oil vapor that's been disturbed straight back into the engine. And I feel like that's where all that smoke comes from when we let off the gas. Now it might not be the only place, but I feel like it's a major contributor and we're also losing a tiny amount of boost. So we're gonna be plugging that off today. Now we also could take some time, cut the bottom out of this intake and we could get rid of that shelf that's in there and do some porting. That would probably free up another 15, 20, 25 horsepower. But the reason I'm not doing that right now is because when I get my 535 done, I'm actually gonna do an intake manifold shootout between an unmodified stock intake and the new Raylar intake so we can find out exactly how much power that new Raylar intake is worth. Uh, long term though, whenever, or I should say if, uh, if this engine is in one piece by the time we get our replacement 535 done, I'm actually gonna go through it, do a few simple modifications, and I'm gonna find some other project to put in it. I don't know what just yet. It's not gonna be a crazy race build like the 535 is, but um, you know, I'll just do things like a cam swap, maybe port the heads or put some, you know, maybe the 8.8 .8 heads. I don't know what just yet, but as long as my engine's still in one piece, I have plans for it and I will show you guys the modification of the stock intake. But anyway, for now, all we're trying to do is plug that hole. This step is totally not important for what we're doing, but that OCD guy in my head got to me.
You're just gonna have to pretend you saw me put those on there because I forgot to hit the record button again. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't put the Raylar intake on, that one has a four bolt, 90 millimeter throttle body. This one has a three bolt, and the 90 millimeter one that I ordered is on back order. So, we're rocking the stock. So we just did a quick test fire and the engine actually won't idle on its own, which is kind of a good thing because that means we have no vacuum leaks in our intake that we just put on. Um, normally, there would be a little bit of extra air that enters the engine through my uh, external breather hose that I modified on the throttle body. And now because that PCV orifice is blocked off, well, there's less air going into the engine to help it run. So I think I just need to crack the throttle plate a little bit and we should be good to go. But that's a good thing though, because I know that we have no vacuum leaks. So it's probably gonna remain a mystery forever why GM decided that a little tiny hole in the bottom of the intake going right into the crankcase would be a good solution for a PCV setup. But at least now we've sort of fixed it. Long term, this is not gonna be like the best solution. Uh, when I get my race motor put back together, I'm probably gonna have some sort of a recirculating PCV system like you should have. Uh, you know, with a check valve so we won't be pushing boost into the crankcase and a catch can to trap any vapors before they go into the intake. Where right now, we basically just have an open breather. So any pressure or vapor in the crankcase is going to get pushed out of that line there and get caught by my little catch can. So there's no active recirculation, but at least now we're not pumping boost pressure straight into the crankcase and hopefully our oil consumption problem will be fixed. Yeah, I wish I could have ported the intake and done stuff like that. But like I said, I do want to do a dyno test between intakes later on. Um, and I can't wait to show you guys that when we get our big or bigger big block put together. But for now, there's only really one way to find out if our upgrade worked. And that means we need to go for a quick drive. And of course, we need to get into boost. Now, honestly, this truck is a little bit on the sketchy side trying to get it into boost out on the street because well, if you're not careful with the throttle, this can happen. But looking in my rear view mirror, I do not see that massive puff of smoke. So I think and I hope that we fixed our problem. Get into a deep vacuum at high RPM here. Yeah, right there, that's where it would smoke the worst. I don't see hardly anything. I mean, maybe smoking a tiny bit, but as far as I'm concerned, 
that fixed the problem. So just as I'm driving around here, I can't help but think of how reliable this build has been overall. Like since day one, even when it was just a naturally aspirated 8.1, all the way up until today where we're pumping 20 pounds of boost through it, or 15 today technically, but we have pumped up to 20 pounds of boost through it, I haven't broken any parts related to having more power than stock. Like the engine, it's a stock long block, stock ring gap, stock valve springs. Uh, other than the modified intake, we haven't opened it up at all. You know, it does have big injectors, but that's just something you need as part of you know, turbocharging. Uh, the transmission, it's a stock-ish 4L80, it's got a shift kit in it, but I only rebuilt that because it had a bad bearing on the inside, not because something broke from too much power. And the rear end, it's a stock 8.6 10 bolt. I haven't changed anything on the inside. Well, I guess I did put a true track in it, but it does have stock axle shafts, it's the stock 342 gears. The only problem this truck has is traction, and I actually have a really, really cool upgrade I cannot wait to show you guys that is going to fix all or some of my traction problems. So uh, come back soon for that. If you enjoyed this build on the 8.1, check out another video of where we actually built the turbo kit. Um, and our first test drive, that was the most fun I have ever had in my automotive career. The first test drive of this boosted 8.1. So thanks for watching. Come back soon.